being a 21st century learner is about so much more than just putting technology in front of a child and asking them to engage with the technology. 21st century learners are global citizens, and so they need to understand how to be a part of this world and how to be an active, empathetic participant in this society. As you talk with more people, consider coworkers of yours, consider parents in your community, reach out to religious organizations that often do mission trips that you may not be aware of, and consider service organizations in your community, such as the Kiwanis and the Rotary. They are always looking to partner up with schools, and they have a lot of investment in your community already, and can probably facilitate that connection between your school and the international community. You may be communicating just by U.S. mail and by personal contact, personal visits between your liaison and that community at first. Or you might be able to set up email, texting, or even Skype. You may be surprised as you start connecting with people to find out they have better electronic access than you thought at first. Many people in developing countries have cell phones, and even if they don't have reliable access to landlines or grid electricity, they may be able to FaceTime you or even get access to the internet if they have a data plan. I recommend having a chat with your IT department and establishing a relationship with them to let them know what you're trying to do. In many schools, Skype may not be available or your school's firewall may degrade the quality of your signal as you're trying to communicate with somebody overseas. Be ready to troubleshoot along with your kids. When you're dealing with time zone differences, you do need to work with the time that your partners and your students can be available, and this can be a real challenge. We've had to be flexible. Sometimes we have to pull students out of a class that they're not normally in to have them engage in a Skype conversation with a partner. So we keep testing until we find a time that seems like it works reliably, and once we have it, then you can settle into a routine with your students and the teachers of those students that have them during that time. students will need to be close to the camera and the microphone because the microphone will pick up the person next to them the best. The rest of the room needs to be silent and have your students practice it. There's an etiquette to working over Skype that isn't the same as communicating in other forms. So having your kids understand that and front-loading the expectations is key to having a successful Skype session.